Welcome. It's Thursday again. Thank you for hanging out. It's the tie cast. Uh, this is Thursday, August 12th, 2021. This is episode 21, which works very well. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is actually our first episode where we're, we are on Twitch only for the live stream. So thank you for hanging out. If you're on YouTube, I'm sorry that you are not hearing this. Thank you for being on Twitch. Um, we're also the the VOD episodes will be going live on uh, YouTube on the new Tycast YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe to that if you want to catch up. If you miss any, uh, they're also going on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and all that. So be sure to subscribe on those platforms if you prefer audio. If you, in case you miss a live stream, um, and also give a review so that other people can uh, can get you know some Tycast action. In their lives um we have an awesome panel for tonight's episode i'm going to introduce them now russ at cryo Cecil, how's it going man pretty good how about you good good to have you back liz at, yeah liz at liz gains exp how have you been oh you're muted sorry I was <laughs> <mute>. i'm good <laughs> no worries no worries uh yeah thanks thanks for joining us again um Luke at Luke Leeson. How you been, man? Good, good. Except for a crazy person that was running around my apartment building. I'm good. Oh, that <laughs> they're like banging on my door like in the afternoon. I was freaking out. That's no. It was a whole thing. Oh man, are you, you're all you're all settled. Yeah, down? I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Let's talk about games. Yeah. Uh, Max at Monado Max. Good to have you back, man. As always. Glad to be here. Did so much packing today, and now I'm here, so I'm excited to talk about some games. Awesome, man. Uh, Nettie and Nettie Dorco, good to have you back again. It's been a few weeks. Oh, it's been very, very busy. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Thanks for thanks for joining us tonight. And then uh, Sally at Retro Arcade Party, good to have you back. How have you been this week? Oh, good and very hot. Yeah, very yeah, we're humid. we're I feel like all of the like Northeast U.S. and like. Canada is getting hit with some crazy heat right now. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for being here. Um, so, uh, Beach Pizza Gaming Aaron was supposed to be on. I've promoted him uh, today, but he is feeling under the weather, so he could not could not make it tonight. Uh, we wish him the best and hope he feels better. Um, and then also, I have a few announcements to make. Um, so, the don't forget September 2nd, that's what, two weeks from today, we are doing our second ever episode of reviewing our uh, video game book club. And uh, so two weeks ago, we announced, we did the like everyone nominated games and then we spun the wheel and Donkey Kong Country for the SNES uh, was the winner. So we're all playing through Donkey Kong Country. And uh, so play along with us, September 2nd, two weeks from today, we are all gonna reconvene and talk about our experiences playing it. So you can either play it on Nintendo Switch Online. I'm playing it on a RetroPie uh, plugged into my CRT TV uh, to get a little, uh, you know, experience with uh, with it separately because I played uh, Super Metroid was the first one I played it on my Nintendo Switch. So doing that. So join us with it. Um, the other thing is if you have a comment or question for us at the end, very end of the uh, show, I will uh, see if there's any comments or questions. You can submit it at any time during the show at technology.com slash comment. You can also use the uh, exclamation point comment uh, in the chat and it'll throw you a link out. Um, so get on that if you want to say anything to us live on, on the air. Um, other than that, let's get into what we all picked up and what we've been playing this week. Uh, we'll start with you, Russ, at Cryo Sneasel. What, uh, what have you been playing and what did you pick up this week? Uh, I'm going to start with the pickup first because I only got one thing. I got the Scott Pilgrim oh, nice. uh, Collector's Edition from Limited Run. Awesome. I am super excited to play this. And it's not opened yet either. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so the games I've been playing was Donkey Kong Country. Um, 
I got pretty far in it today. I think I have two worlds left. I have the ice one, and I think there's one after that. Uh, I've been playing Bioshock on the Switch. Um, I'm kind of surprised how good that runs. I was playing it on my Switch Lite, and it actually looks pretty good. I heard that. that, that yeah, I heard that ran pretty well when it when it yeah. first came out. Yeah, I didn't see like any slowdown or anything. And it looks good too. Yeah, nice. And uh, the only other thing I've been playing was I tried to dive back into Scarlet Nexus. I put like another two, three hours in it. How are you enjoying that? I know you're not as it. much as I thought I would. <laughs> really? It's it's kind of slow. I think once I get more into like the story and get more powers, it'll be more fun. But right now, it's just kind of meh. Yeah. Right on. Um, Liz at Liz, Liz Gains EXP. What have you uh, been playing this week and what did you pick up? I don't think I've picked up anything new since I was on here last. Um, I am playing Trying Four with Nettie and Kizis. We're, we've still, still been like slowly making our way through that. I think we just like have maybe one or two more playthroughs until we're done. Um, Pico Park, <laughs> we <laughs> played that, which you're going to. Yeah. Get uh, I'm gonna interrupt you because we're gonna we're gonna watch this real quick. Uh, so yeah, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you, Liz, Nettie, Sally, Kizis, um, um, Ken Wai, yeah, uh, I don't even know who else was on that on that stream, but you guys were all playing uh, Pico Park, and I have to pull this up because it is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> So sorry if you're listening to audio, you're just gonna hear a bunch of people screaming. Oh. But uh, <laughs> the video, come, come to come watch the video version for this. Oh my gosh. Here we go. go. Yellow, go, yellow, go, yellow, go, yellow, go, yellow, go. I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Rolly, get the hell out of here. Hit okay. Up. Plans be, plans be very careful. Nettie was playing for me because I was fucking scared of shit. Okay. Hey, Nettie was playing. Okay, Nettie, Nettie, move to the right a little bit. <laughs> Nettie, slowly I'm move to the right. Just so slightly. Nettie, okay. Oh okay, good sit, enough, jump. Enough, okay, Nettie, oh. do not fall. Oh <laughs> 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 oh <my God. laughs> So please, please explain. No, 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 no. Uh, that was what after an hour of playing that same level over and over. It was. It did take almost an hour by the end. I think that was like 45 minutes in. <laughs> just playing that same level, and it's not even super long. <laughs> but we just like, there's eight of us, and one of us kept accidentally hitting the button. So finally, we kind of like got that strategy down. And like, um, also, some people I think were having issues with like the frame rate. So like, they thought they were jumping over the button, but um, I think like the ping was bad. So then they would accidentally hit it. So we made up that strategy to make like stairs that way we can just like have like the the most like minimal people actually like going over the buttons or having to jump. And then we we're so close and then Nettie hit it. We we're like all out. We thought we were free. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. In my defense, Liz, in my defense. Um, you, we played Pico Park on my stream before, right? <laughs> and then I did say that if I was the last person, everyone's staring at me and my anxiety goes way up. And guess who the last person was? Me. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. <laughs> Yeah, we should have uh, thought that out better. <laughs> when when I played it with you guys, I I experienced some of that where people were like kind of moving around, mm -hmm. or it would like it would trans like just move your guy a little bit randomly, yeah. just here and there, and it was kind of inconsistent. That's the only pain, especially with something <laughs> that's so intricate of a game. Like it's a blast, uh, but like that gets frustrating when you it's so fine, like a <laughs> finely tuned uh, where you yeah. just dot everyone, everyone loses. <laughs> but i do feel bad for how much like I, I was like looking at my vod and i'm like i sound so bossy <laughs> <laughs> just yelling at it i mean someone uh, someone has to take the lead on that game like i, I yeah, remember it, like otherwise it just turns into chaos and so <laughs> yeah we spent like the longest time on that level too when we were playing with Nettie on her stream so i was just like over that level and and drunk <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah Forgot to add that oh, you guys were all please. like playing like a drinking game, like while <laughs> while playing, so that added to it. Um, was that was, yeah? Did, we're... 
Was to there get shot whenever else? people died. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, Was there anything else I missed? You missed? I, I am planning on playing Donkey Kong Country with you guys. Nice. Um, Plains is here. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like start a brand new playthrough on just my own, or if maybe I might. Like I, I was playing Donkey Kong Country with him. So, oh, okay. Plains, I don't know if you want to continue that on with me, but I, I do plan chat. on starting that. Nice. Yeah, he's a kid, Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, I'm also playing Pokemon Unite still. I still play that pretty much daily. Nice. <laughs> um, trying to rank up, but I'm still stuck an expert. And the Great, great Ace Attorney Chronicles every once in a while. I, I nice. put that in if I'm just chilling. Such an awesome <laughs> game. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been wanting to yeah, try I, that. I always love the series. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, uh, I've been wanting to try that. It's it's on my list. Um, that's that's fun. Um, Luke at Luke Leeson, what have you been playing? What are you up to? Been a little busy, so I've just been playing Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, for I've been, the most part. Yeah, I saw you in the Discord. You're giving yeah. lots of updates. I was struggling through it. I'm at the very end, and I'm just at that end boss, and I'm trying to beat him, but he's kicking my butt. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not as far as you are, so I'm not looking forward to any, <laughs> any of that. Oh, you have a lot to go through then. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I, that was so tough. And that's, I don't know. Next next month, <laughs> I'm like, we are not doing a old platforming, like. Yes. <laughs> I don't mind it, but we need oh, something like different. A new one. Have yeah. A new one. Oh yeah, like Nettie's gonna <laughs> nominate oh, freaking no. Spelunky, no. and we're all gonna, oh, no. we're all gonna stab ourselves in the face. Before that's, that's, that would be the end of the of the tie cast uh, video game book club. It's like, and we're done. Thank you for it was a fun three 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 months, and we're we're done. Um, Max at Monado Max, what uh, I know you were you were busy. So what what'd you pick up? What you what have you been playing? All right, so I went to the limited run flea market event that happened Saturday mm -hmm. at the parking lot where the retail store that's going to be in uh, a shopping mall that's opening up in January. So they apparently do this event yearly. I didn't know about this, and I probably should have known about this since, you know, I live in North Carolina, you know. But yeah. apparently this is like their third event. So I went there. I was amazed by the whole thing, uh, especially the line for this. Uh, I had to wait five hours to get inside the limited run booth. Ooh. They they were they allowed you to look at the other vendors. They gave you a ticket and basically you're free to explore. But if you wanted the limited run booth, you had to wait till they call your ticket up. So while I was waiting, I picked up a lot of things. <laughs> so I got Ninja Gaiden on the Switch. This is an import. Uh, I believe this is from Asia, actually. Uh, according to my comment section, this is from Asia. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to figure out the official, like, where this came from. So that's, should, that's pretty cool. It should say... Uh, Might be from Play Asia. That's, oh. uh, that's what they believe, Play Asia. Because uh, apparently they uh, print sometimes some English covers. I, I don't know. Uh, normally, there's, like, a rating that will tell you, like, Peggy, stuff like that. But... I can't even find a rating on this thing, so I have no idea where if this there, Yeah, if there's from. no rating, then it's definitely not North American. I think PlayAsia printed that, but I'm not 100% sure on it. Oh. Because that's where I got mine, was from PlayAsia. And mine doesn't have a rating or anything either. Yeah, hey, uh, is the spine, does it have the name ooh, on the side or in the middle? Yes, it does. It's on the side? Hmm. Yeah. It's got weird font, though, which is kind of weird. Compared to, like, it's it honestly it looks like something that would be like a fake nintendo switch game the font <laughs> is so weird oh is that like the i, I questioned buying it because i was like is this legit it looked weird it's like the spongebob one where it's all where it's not it's a title case oh, instead of yeah, that instead of all caps different. that's the only game i have like that and I then know. i got a duplicate so i got super mario galaxy i own this game but only the disc uh, this guy was selling it for ten dollars, nice. so I bought this. So I'm gonna sell the disc, and I should be able to get my money back because sure. uh, I want to own all 3D Mario games in its case. That's my goal. So hopefully that happens. And then by the time that happened, 
Well, I, I was still exploring. Uh, it was like 3 p.m. when I was called up to get my limited run stuff. I picked up stuff for Toaster Dog. Uh, I'll let him say what I got for him, so I won't spoil. Uh, nice. I see him in the I chat. Got, I got Celeste, limited run. Uh, this is crazy. I was surprised that this sold out instantly. And then they found like a, a hidden box, so I got like one of the last copies oh. of the whole event. Uh, although, I thought Celeste had a different cover art. Am I wrong? I have no idea. I feel like it wrong. does. I, I'm not too sure, but I feel like it is different from what you have. And then I got uh, Star Wars Jedi Outcast. Nice. Uh, I own this game on PC, and I never got a chance to finish it, so I'm excited to play this. Nice. And then this one might be my favorite I picked up. Uh, Star Wars Racer, Episode 1. Yeah. Never played this. I know everyone talks oh, about man. this game. So I'm looking forward to playing that. Oh, I okay. I got more things. My bad. <laughs> I got I got the world ends with you on the Nintendo Switch. Nice. I know a lot of people hate the Switch version. Uh, I have a goal trying to get all the published Nintendo games oh, on the Switch. Yeah. I have the DS version. I recently picked that up like two months ago. I'm gonna sell that to make more money back off this because I paid way too much for this that I'm not happy about. And then for some reason, I have L.A. Noir here. I, I didn't buy this. I don't know why it's on my desk, but I got the game if anyone was curious. <laughs> I liked uh, L.A. Just, Noir. I liked that a lot. Yeah, I did, too. The ending sucked, but everything else was great about the game. In, um, in, in a, something that will shock no one, especially Sally, I did not actually beat L.A. Noir. I, play, I put <laughs> hours and hours and hours into that, and I never got to the very, very end. I think I, I gave Be up on thankful. it. Be thankful. The ending sucked. It, it was not a great ending. <laughs> And then in terms of the games I played, I played Donkey Kong Country. I beat the first two worlds, so I'm on the third world. And then I played uh, Ninja Gaiden, uh, the first one. I got to, like, Chapter 5. And then I did more Skyward Sword. I'm getting closer and closer to beating that game. Nice. And uh, that's what I played. Sweet. Well, good pickups, Max, dude. You, like, took the whole, <laughs> the whole like... More than what we normally get combined this week. Yeah, my wallet really isn't happy. Oh, about for it, sure. So. Uh, oh, and I, I picked up Disney Infinity figures. I didn't show them because I know nobody here cares about that. <laughs> I picked up Disney Infinity figures. Nice. For anyone that's curious. <laughs> uh, Nutty at Nutty Dorco, what, did, uh, what, what have you been playing? What did you pick up? Well, before I answer that, I was really curious about the whole Celeste thing, and I was looking at it, and it looks like the one that you got is a limited foil cover. So, oh, I saw some nice rare one. So, Ooh. oh, nice. I'm a little now jealous. That makes me not want to it. <laughs> <laughs> this makes um, me want to keep it sealed. So, yeah, like... keep it sealed. 100. percent Keep it sealed. <laughs> Hey, that relates oh, to our discussion today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so um, topical. I've had such a busy few weeks with like weddings and meeting up with people and everything so I haven't really picked up anything but I've resumed back to gaming and I've been playing Little Nightmares Little Lego Builder's Journey which I think is like so therapeutic it's only like $20 on the Switch and it's basically like this little puzzle oh. game with like little yes yeah I saw that I want I want yeah. I love the look of <laughs> the look of that game I totally forgot about yeah. that yeah and then with like the little sounds, the little clickety clicks that you hear, it's amazing. Um, and then I've also been playing Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which I think I'm almost done with. Um, and Donkey Kong Country 2 and Tried 4. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of, been <laughs> juggling a lot of games sure. this whole week. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, you're catch catching up for for all the miss the missed time when you're busy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, Sally, Retro Arcade Party what have you been playing did you pick anything up i didn't pick anything up but uh, i think pico park may have wiped my memory of the past week <laughs> 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 played that with Nettie and then on liz's stream and it was just an absolute blast i had so much fun playing that um i'm still going through skyward sword and i intend to do that for the next few months so i'll keep bringing this up every time i'm here and I started playing Bastion, which I really am mm -hmm. enjoying. And playing, um, I played Splatoon on my stream. Oh yeah, so I was, was fun to I get was back there. into. Yeah, it was fun to get back into that. And Pokemon Unite here and there. That's pretty much it. Nice. Um, 
Are you still playing? I'm going to bring this up every time we talk about Bastion. Are you still playing Hades? Yeah, I haven't gotten back to it because <laughs> I started it with my husband. So I, we want to kind of try to do it together. Yeah, no, for sure. I tr Trust me, Sally, I understand the uh, the struggle with... You got so far to that. I know. I, just, I still think about it like every day and I want to go back and finish it. Uh, it'll happen. <laughs> it will happen. I I know it will. Um, for me, I got weirdly. I got um, so I got my my loft wing, nice. and Zelda amiibo, um, oh. which I am not opening. I am keeping this sealed. <laughs> and then it's not coming till October. <laughs> and then I got the uh, the the uh, acrylic. What is it? My Nintendo points uh, thing My that I paid seven. Gets all these things, and he's never gonna beat the game. I, you know what? <laughs> you know what, Salisha? <laughs> I. Oh, use my full name. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you listen here now. Uh, I will. I do. I have like. I really do want to beat. I want to beat Breath of the Wild first because that's what I'm most passionate about. And. I'm glad that you on my stream that you're like play Breath of the Wild. I was very very nervous because I hadn't played it in almost a year because I put it down, and I'm glad that you convinced me to, and then even hopped in the Discord to <laughs> to voice through my my well, walkthrough. Because I guess you you were stuck because you were doing something you weren't. Supposed yeah, to do I think I stopped at a, a I think I stopped at a bad point, and I thought I was supposed to use the shock arrows for the Lionel and not for the divine beast or whatever that i was supposed to fight next and so i was just kept dying and i was like okay i'm done with this for a little bit and then i just never i didn't go back to it for a long time um but thank you i i do want to be that and i talked about it like a, the last or a couple weeks ago where i was like the the lore and the magic of zelda and that whole world is so magical uh that i want to explore it more it's just it's I not think Max's my... shirt is giving us good yes, luck, and that exactly. you're gonna play. And finish the game. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> I have, I'm committed. Um, and then, other than that, I played Donkey Kong Country uh, on my on my. The if you watch my YouTube, I have a, a CRT behind me that I I've been playing Donkey Kong Country on that uh, on my on my uh, Retro Pie, and then uh, Pico Park a little bit um, with you guys. Uh, I did the Back for Blood beta with Kizis. I think it's still in the chat. He's a he's a panelist, um, and then Breath of the Wild. I think I did Rocket League. I don't remember. It was about a week ago. I did some Rocket League with Toaster Dog and and his brother. So that's what I've been up to. Um, so we I know we touched on it already, but our big topic tonight is sealed games with a Sally. I know you wanted to also include like our backlog and games that we bought that we don't play. Because they kind of go hand in hand. And so um, let's start with sealed games. What do you have? What? Why do you have them? What is your like reasoning for this weirdness? And uh, we'll start with that. Russ, I'm going to start with you. It's been a while since we talked. So... I just looked. I have 900 games about, and I only have seven sealed games. Really? And all but one, yeah, and all but one are Switch. So I thought you said you couldn't. You had too many to carry. No, that, I think that was Luke. Oh, was that Luke? <laughs> oh, you got you guys have the you guys have the same color name. I think I thought I was. Just, <laughs> I think I was talking to you on a different channel. Okay, never mind. Never mind. So I have Monster Hunter Stories 2. I just never cared to open it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and the other four are limited run games. Uh, this one might not be. This one's not. Uh, three of them are limited run games. Uh, this one is Layers of Fear Legacy. I don't really know if I want to play it. <laughs> that, um, that game's fun. Scary. <laughs> It's actually I was tempted to game. get that game at the limited run flea market event because they had it for sale, and then like the first fifty people were scalpers and they bought that thing up fast. Mm. Was so I, played, I played it on Xbox. I think I have it on something. 
I would just play it there. I don't want to open it now, especially if scalpers want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like alert, like sound the alarms. And the other three games for the Switch are the three Shantae limited run games. And those are another one that I'm kind of afraid to open now because I keep seeing like the Shantae games are kind of expensive. I don't know if those are. I haven't looked. Um, and the only other game that I have sealed is SOCOM US Navy SEALs. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a, a subscription box maybe a year ago where they send you like three to five games and this was one of them and i know i would not like this game so i just kept it sealed just because it was sealed and it looks like it's factory sealed it doesn't look like a reseal i i played that game uh because if you remember the original was that is that the first one that was the one that if it was i have no idea i am not into yeah the so so that one it came with a headset when it first launched because it was the launch mm-hmm. of the Sony online. It was like their, the, their first online game, but you needed like the adapter for the PS2 and it came with a headset. And, uh, yeah, I think you could play on dial up on the PS2 <laughs> wow. like that's, and I, I remember playing that, uh, right when it came out. Um, so it seems like I'm going to, we're going to keep moving forward and anyone feel free to jump in. Like you don't have to like wait your turn. Like this is an open discussion. We're just going to move through it uh, as we talk about everyone's uh, experience with this. But it seems like there's kind of two camps. Uh, there's the, I, it's not open because I haven't gotten a chance to even play it yet. And I'm just, it's not a priority to play. And then there's the, I'm worried about opening this because it's going to decrease in value because there's either a collector type of thing or even like like in my instance i'm like one day i can pass this on to my children and then that'll be some type of something special that they can even if, even if it's like a they sell it and it's worth a lot um type of thing it seems like unless there's something else in between that i haven't thought about it seems like those are the kind of the two uh main uh, motivations for not opening a game if you want to call it that um but liz what about you okay so i have my pile i went through my house and collected all of them <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay let's see what we have um i have god of war for the ps4 i actually started playing it i borrowed it from a friend um played it a bit and then he needed it back <laughs> i have it too so, so i let him well i gave it to him back of course and then bought my own copy and i still haven't touched it since then <laughs> um i have five switch games um yoma mari i this this was i think like one of the first switch games i bought and then i just like was busy playing the other ones i bought at the same time and just never got to it super mario 3d all-stars i bought it just because they said, you know, it was limited, so um, had to grab that. Lost Fear, I just haven't gotten to it. It's an RPG game, and it's time-consuming. Um, I have other RPG games I'd want to finish before getting to that one. Dragon Quest, I bought from my collection. I, I do want to play it. I don't know. I, I kind of want to, like, not open it, because I love Dragon Quest games, and I want to keep it as like a collector's item, but if I remember, that was it wasn't one of your top three franchises of all time, Dragon Quest. Yeah. Have you played? Have you played all those games before? Not not all of them. I've played the first one, four through s- four through nine. Okay. I played ma- majority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't started eleven yet, but but yeah, I will probably open this and play them. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's something that would be, like, worth anything. Um, and then Chris Tales, it's a game I just got, like, a few weeks ago. And I've just been playing Pokemon Unite instead <laughs> and, and uh, The Great Ace Attorney. Um, Radiant Historia is a game that I had for the DS. Um, I only played it a little bit, and then they came out with, like, this newer version for the 3DS, like a, a remake. Um, and it's a collector's edition, I think. So yeah, I, that's, I like that. I like that it. case. Yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> Dragon Quest V. Um, the first time I played it, I actually had like this little like DS ROM thing that you 
put on in your DS, but you can like download games on it. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> I remember that. The yeah. 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 So, I, I did. I did steal back then, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I played Dragon Quest five and I absolutely loved it. And then, um, I think earlier this year, I'm like, you know what? I need to have like a copy of that game for the future. Cause my R4 doesn't work on like my 3DS. So, um, I picked this up and I'm probably just going to have it sealed for a while. Cause I've already beaten it. Just needed it for my collection. And then my game that's worth the most is my Final Fantasy six. <laughs> which I didn't even, like, purposely keep it as a sealed item. Um, I think I played Final Fantasy VI, like, on my PlayStation 1, like, a long time ago and just picked this up. Um, no, actually, that's not true. That was other games. No, Final <laughs> Fantasy VI, I, I picked up on my PS3, <laughs> and I just played it on there. Um, but a few years ago, I did go to play it on my Game Boy Advance, and I realized it was still sealed, and I'm like, no, I can't like, open this. Like, 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 had a hesita- hesitation. Yeah, I was like, this is probably worth a lot. Like, I didn't even realize it was still sealed, so I played it on PS2 instead. But, yeah, nice. that is my sealed that's a, that's a good good uh, collection. I, noticed, I know you play a lot of RPGs, and I feel like that, mm-hmm. that would be, that's probably a, a genre that both um, gets, like, I, I feel like probably rpgs more so than other types of games are usually left sealed <laughs> for some reason like i think there's there's at least for me there's that anxiety about like okay do i want to dive into this right mm-hmm. now and then you wait and then like at some point you're <laughs> like well now it's not even worth any like you know you like it it passes that that yeah but i yeah. don't know i'm not an rpg mm-hmm. player and so maybe that's just my uh projection into <laughs> yeah and I actually had like a bunch of PS2 RPGs that I just I figured I would never get to and end up just selling them um, because it's just <laughs> they, they take up too much time. So you really got to pick and choose. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, Luke, what about you? Well, I had to dig through my stack. I'm not going to list what all these games are, but these are all my Switch games I just haven't got to. It's backlog stuff. Yeah, but. Two games in particular that I'm keeping sealed would be the Final Fantasy VII and VIII on Switch and Final Fantasy IX. And that's just because I've already played them before. I already beat them. Yeah. And I just, I just like them for the novelty, too, because there's this story back in the day where, like, Square had a falling out with Nintendo, and they said, our Final Fantasy games will never be on a Nintendo system. And now here we are in the future. <laughs> Everything's all good, and they're on the Nintendo Switch. So it's just kind of ironic, I guess. Yeah, it's, yeah. Funny. it's it's funny with Final Fantasy VII since it was supposed to be on the N sixty four and it didn't right. happen because yeah. you used cartridges and you got a cartridge version of Final Fantasy VII. It's right, funny. Yeah, it comes <laughs> oh, full circle. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's yeah. I want, I want those. I have the the um, digital editions like on my Switch, but I think I need to buy those because I need them for my collection. I have a question. Uh, before we keep what? moving, do you how many games do you have both physical and digital? Oh, copies. Is that oh. a question for any of us? Anyone, anyone. I a lot. <laughs> yeah, oh, you have. I just is that a common thing? I I just struggled with that. I was like, do I buy? I just what did I just I, something I just bought. I have it. Um, I don't remember. Untitled Goose Game. I have it digitally and I just bought a physical copy because it was on sale. But like, I don't, oh, I don't, but, like, but even still, I'm like, it, it's a, it, I had to overcome that. I'm like, I feel like I'm doing something wrong or like, like, I don't know. Is that a thing or is that, am I just a weirdo about that too? Like, nah, I feel like that's, that's how I feel. Cause uh, yeah. with No More Heroes, they did a limited run version of that. And I already owned it digitally on my Switch. And I really liked that game from what I played, and I really wanted a physical copy. And I felt exactly what you were just describing, that, like, shouldn't do this because I own a digital. You already, like, yeah, it's like it's like buying multiple copies of the same game. Yeah. It's just, it's a, yeah. weird, it's a weird feeling, at least for me. I wasn't sure. I never really asked anyone that, but I just thought about it because you're talking about, like, games that you've already played that you now have another copy that's sealed. Um, and then, um, Max, what about you? All right, so I completely forgot to get all my sealed games. So I got a bunch of limited run stuff that I just showed off. So I got Celeste here <laughs> that 
<laughs> uh, I I'm no... probably now that I figured out that it's a rare game. I like I feel guilty opening it because it's only like a ten dollar eShop game. So I'm like I'm, I might buy it digitally. <laughs> there we go. Like, there we go. Talking. That's <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, I like, would. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I didn't realize. I wanted to play it in cartridge form, but like now that if I open this, I'm gonna feel guilty. And uh, these two, I'm definitely going to open up. I I don't care. Even if it's rare, I don't care. I'm not gonna research it because I'm gonna feel guilty. Um, I can actually see my Switch collection. I don't have many sealed things. Anything that's sealed, I always open it. Uh, just because I feel like if you buy a game, you're supposed to play the game, not keep it like that way. Um, I only have two things that I'm keeping sealed. Uh, one is Bless. Sushi Striker, the way of Sushido. I think it's I yeah. can't read from right here. Um, there's it was I want I game. want that game. I, Sushido? Yes. Sushi, sushi yes. like a sushi burrito? Uh, I, no. I, I, I don't. Think, I don't think so. I'm no. hung. I'm hungry now. God, so um, um, food. I got, I got Sushi Striker at Walmart this year for five dollars and i really don't care about playing that game it doesn't look appealing to me i know a lot of people like it but i was talking about how i was trying to get all the published nintendo games for the switch and i just i don't care about opening it i don't think i'm gonna like that game and then celeste and then actually the doom 64 that i bought from limited run there was, it was the collector's edition i'm keeping that sealed because that's a five dollar digital game and like I feel like that's yeah. It's kind of dumb to open that if it's five dollars. Yeah, the there, there's that. There's that inherent value. Like you, you're paying five dollars to to play the game versus the loss in value of your sealed version. It would cost you know that like potential value uh, is greater, which I understand that. I think that's all my sealed games because uh, I've opened everything um oh wait i got the uh the aladdin and lion king so oh, yeah. i haven't had a chance i'm gonna open it eventually i just haven't had the chance oh, to yeah. actually play the game so yeah that's all my sealed games nice. i got nothing for the playstation 4 ps5 sealed they're always opened yeah for sure uh nettie what about you i'm very good about opening my games <laughs> honest i don't have anything sealed i i don't believe i have anything sealed but um Looking at my backlog, I have like 607 games, what? but I'm working through it. I'm working through it. <laughs> I have finished 141 games. Do you? Do you? Oh. Do you? What? <laughs> That's awesome. It's like when you say fin- you're like you're like, uh, sorry. Do you have some way of tracking this? How did you just pull that number out? Or Liz, <laughs> my best friend, right above me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She introduced me to this website called backloggery.com. Oh, Not sponsored, yeah. by the way. But um, <laughs> if you guys want, like, there's this, like, it's like this website called backloggery.com where you kind of just log in all your games. And then you can, like, kind of check off which which games you're currently playing. And then once you finish it, you can mark it as beat or completed. So then, like, just seeing all that and this is the percentage going up, I feel like it's, like, really motivated me to complete my games. I love, um, I love stuff like that. Yeah, so that's why I always like encourage like a whole bunch of people who like buy games to get a backloggery, just because like it helps you actually complete your games. Uh, but I don't, I really don't have anything sealed. Um, I I like to collect games, but then since they've come up with like digital copies, I'm like, oh, I feel like that's like a lot better. Like I don't want to like keep piling up all my games and everything, and then have to research what's rare and what's not. It's it's really it's really uh, stressful. <laughs> oh, Liz, Liz is, is dropping your link in the chat to see your your current oh status. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for. I think we got a couple uh, follows. Thank you for the follow. Um, uh, where did I just saw it? Uh, Chicago Retro Gamer, and then I saw another follow. I'll get you later. Um, yeah, the I know you you do buy a lot of uh, digital especially since you do a lot of steam stuff and then um which is understandable um that's good i i didn't i i had heard of backloggery but i didn't i never thought of using it that's a good that's a good idea do the whole like excel sheet because you told me that you did 
and on the Excel sheet, then you probably like filter and clear and all that stuff. But then it's so, so much work. Like, yeah, it's so much work. You have to filter it, and it's like this it's whole lazy. data thing, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, ever since the whole backloggery thing, I like moved away from my Excel sheet, and I was like, okay, like I'll just put everything on backloggery. It's so much oh, easier. Oh, for sure. Good too, because like don't... we get so many, so many free games from Twitch or for, like from Prime oh, Gaming, yeah. Yeah. and so many free games from like Epic, Epic. and stuff. So. Um, the backlog rate is like useful for checking to see if I already have games because I made the mistake of accidentally buying like a game oh, and I already got oh, it for free. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there? It, you know, what would be smart is if there was a way to to like use an API to sync your all your different accounts, like your like you know how like Discord you can like the single sign on type of stuff where you can okay. attach everything and then it just dumps all of your digital games like automatically into there and then you can just go through. I assume that it does. So assume it does. Weird. It doesn't do that, right? That would be that no, would be no. awesome. Okay. On Steam, you can like import games onto it, but I think you would have to do it like one by one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just I'm I'm in my like work mode, like programming <laughs> mode. I'm like, uh. God, Galaxy does something like that. <laughs> oh, does it? Yeah, it links Steam, uh, Origin games. And it can Epic it can it pull pull your library. Yeah, it, like pulls uh, all your library see, together, so you can look at it in all one place. Any, any, uh, we got, I think we're, we're on the precipice of a new business venture here on the TieCast of <laughs> automatically pulling your, <laughs> the, the competitor to backloggery that does it automatically. Um, yeah. So, uh, Toast in the, in the chat said game. I, I know a lot of people use game. I, uh, I think that's also for like, uh, pricing and, and stuff like that. And I use price charting right now. I'm going through with all because I bought 300 stupid old games that I'm trying to catalog right now. It's so time consuming. Um, Sally, what yes. do you have? Do you have any sealed games? I do not have any sealed I knew physical it. games. I knew it. Obviously, <laughs> I do have games digitally that I purchased that I have not opened or played at all yet so i i don't know if that counts as I, I, a sealed game that's a, yeah, yeah yeah it's just a, a, essentially the same thing it's a backlog so, you know when there's a sale you know you go a little crazy and you buy some game you you, you want to take advantage of the sale so i buy them digitally i i can't buy something physical and not take the cellophane off <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's half of the experience but Okay, here's my here's my deal. I grew up having I didn't grow up with a lot of stuff. I was my father passed really young. I was my mom was raised in with seven kids on a farm in Guyana. So she really kind of instilled in us that you do not waste anything. You do not buy frivolously. You do not buy things that you're not going to use. So I grew up being like i can't buy something and not use it so when i started getting into games like non nes games in 2011 i found it hard to even buy games i struggled with that mentally just i i feel so bad buying it spending money so when i did buy a game that i wanted i, I really i had to really want the game i would look up reviews to make sure that i really wanted it so and that would justify my purchase and when i wanted a new game I would trade in old games and that would suck because I, I also wanted a, a collection to have of my game, a lot, nice library, but I would trade in the games because I felt bad and I felt it conflicting to just spend money on things that were very expensive and what if I didn't like it? What if it just sits there? So to me, it I... I just can't buy something unless I do my due diligence and research it and I know that it's a game that I'm going to like. I cannot yeah. buy a game and not open it. Every game that even the ga digital games that I have, I intend to eventually play. Yes. But yeah. I can't buy a game and keep it there because for me, that's just, uh, God, it's just a wasted game and on the yeah. other side of it aside from that me growing up not having anything is you especially now that i'm in video game design i see all of the hard work that goes into it and there's a 
there's teams of hundreds of people working on these games and they pour their souls into it and it takes, I don't know, if you guys tuned into my stream, you see me working on some game design stuff. It takes like an hour to make a few scratches on things and you guys will pass by these assets and you won't even notice those little scratches. <laughs> So all these uh, the people working on the design, the conceptual art, the story, to me, keeping it sealed is like keeping a beautiful art piece in a box never to be seen again. <laughs> these, the, these games are meant to be played. They're meant to be beaten. They're meant to be seen the story and make it to the end. So I just, I have such a hard time when, and I, I bug Tyler a lot for not beating Kate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Sally. I, uh, Just for that reason, because I feel like so much work goes into them. They're meant, <laughs> you, you need to see these stories. They're beautiful. I, I, there are games that I, I have not finished. There are games that I have not played. So, yes, put me in that backlogery category as well. But to intentionally say I'm going to buy it and not beat it is just, Oh, it's 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 a work of art that needs to be seen. Yes, and I, I hope that I hope that I hope that if I make a game or design a game, that you guys will see it through to the end. Because I would I would feel hurt knowing that Sally, I will something I design. I will find every. Will say, hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna open this game. <laughs> I will find every single scratch on every single rock. I will explore every square foot of your game. And Thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> but no, that's uh, no, I I completely understand uh, your perspective. Like, I mean, I used to be in the music industry, and it's like um, little things that you you. There's like so much intention with so many things that no one will ever know, and it it's one of those things where it's like bittersweet. Like, oh, it's like there's thousands of Easter eggs that we would we would throw into our music that no one ever found but then if some one person is like oh they see a connection somewhere and it's just, it like it's so much re so rewarding as a creator to to experience that and and so i totally understand the perspective from the uh like developers and and stuff like that like and i will beat breath of the wild i promise because <laughs> that being said super I, 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 it's super I metroid what... I, I i am gonna beat super metroid too because i need beat to too. i need to i i I got close, and I'm going to beat it. I do understand the the novelty of keeping things pristine and beautiful and, and it's nice package. So I could definitely understand that side of it, too. And the, only thing, the only thing I have sealed, I think, is my Duck Hunt Amiibo, which I got from Japan. And I only keep it, kept it sealed because it, it was from Japan and had, it has all the Japanese writing on it. So I said, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. And it's nice. And that's like that's like a little touch of like like sometimes the value the value of it can yeah. outweigh the like use of it. Like if especially if it's something that's not like it's not something tangible that if you've already played the game or if it's something that is you know, you can buy a second time for five bucks, it's I there is that like especially when I think about my kids and like I wanna be able to give something to them that I know that they know that I'm passionate about that could have value. And if, if I, if me opening it just to play it again, uh, drops that value for them in the future that I don't know, I think those, all those thoughts cross my mind, but I'm a, I'm a very analytical person. And like, that's why I'm like, I'd rather buy one of the, like, um, the little NFC like programmers to, copy whatever this does the, the, to use the function in the game and keep this sealed then pull this out to stick it on my switch once and like oh that's cool and then it's and but then i have an open box um the other thing does anyone have any graded games has anyone ever done that i have graded any. comics oh okay another it's very controversial right now what are graded games? Sorry, it's where <laughs> like if you have if you have a sealed game, usually sealed. Some people send in unsealed, which I I've heard makes no sense because it's very expensive to do this. Um, you send it in to there's like two main uh, companies that do it, and they rate it and they analyze it and everything, and it's and it's 
there's a lot of gray area, but they put it in a box and they put a score on it and then they like give you like a certificate and send it back to you and then it increases the value. So like when you we have a news item, there's a two million dollar copy of or a copy of Super Mario Brothers sealed r- rated by WADA, a nine oh, yeah. nine point eight but... that sold for two million dollars uh this week. And uh and so it's like a, basically a certification of its quality in terms of production and like Dang. and then they put it in a little like box for you with a label. How much does it cost to grade it? Uh depends on uh, depends on the I think it depends on the value of the game. Like it's like a it's like a sliding scale, but I remember um I looked it up just cuz I was curious and like I think it starts at like over $200 to and it takes oh, wow. it takes months too because like they're over overwhelmed with people sending in oh, wow. stuff like and but you can like spend like upwards of $1000 to to do to have it something graded. And so I don't know. I see it all over Instagram. People like sending off and then complaining that it's like been six months and they still haven't heard back. And it's like, they're just waiting on these grades. And I don't know. I don't really have a horse in that race, but I hear, I hear a lot of stuff on either side of it, but I don't know. Um, all right, back. Oh, wait, I haven't even talked. I haven't talked about mine. Sorry. I was going to move on, but, um, I just bought all these games. Uh, so they're just because I haven't gotten to them. It's, uh, Risk of Rain 2, I just bought, haven't opened yet. Uh, Subnautica and Below Zero, which I won't, I really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open all the Switch games, I think, because um, they were not, not expensive games or rare games. I just haven't gotten to them. Um, Wonderful 101, I got that. That's I'm, such a good game. Is it? I, no, I, no I, I, I got it because I really want to play it. Pikmin 3 I Deluxe. I will tell you, I think that's, Switch version kind of sucks. Yeah, I, I figured, but um, I think I, all, all four of these games I got on deep discount, and they're just games that I was like, okay, they are on sale for probably cheaper than I'll ever see them, and so I bought them, but they're not high on my to-do list uh, in terms of playing games. And then uh, similarly, when I got my PS5, I got uh, I there was a big sale on the... Uh, PlayStation hits for PS4 because I never had a PS4, so I they were all eight dollars, and so I got the Uncharted collection, uh, Ratchet and Plank, which a lot of these games I have digitally now because they're part of the like PS Plus, whatever. Um, which I think Ratchet and Plank, Horizon I have digitally, God of War I have digitally, and then uh, God of War Three, which I might open this one because I really want to play this. I never played God of War Three. Um, the remastered or the original. And then I also got Ghost of Tsushima on sale. And so that's still sealed, which I really want to play. I just, I need to beat Miles Morales. I need to turn on my PS5. I haven't turned it on in so long. I turned it on by accident. And I was like, oh, oh, I forgot about, I forgot about you. (laughs) When I was, because I got a new computer, like a little Mac mini, and I was putting it under my PS5. And I accidentally turned on the PS5. I was like, oh, that was a weird experience that I haven't felt in a couple months so i need to get back into that i've been all switch and pc lately but um okay backlog Nettie, i know you touched on this um who wants who's who wants to volunteer about buying games that you've never actually played or like do you buy do you have the guilt of well, every time you buy a new game and you see that like however many games that like like if i bought a new like a ps4 game i would see ghost of tsushima and I'd be like oh no no like do you do you feel that like uh yeah <laughs> i i feel it like a thousand percent just because i have so many games that i've actually started on um and then like i would reach like maybe 50 percent, and then i'd be like i'd get stuck on a boss and then I'd be like, okay, well, I'll, I'll wait, like, until next month or, like, a few weeks later until I try to attempt defeating the boss again. And then I just never touch it because I end up finding this other game that I want to play. Or there would be, like, other games where I enjoyed the story so much, and then I'm finally at the final boss. And I know I can beat the final boss, I just don't want the story to end. 
So then I would just like leave it. Like, I think I've done that with, uh, I think Dark Cloud. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Dark Cloud, but it was like on the PS2. And I was like, okay, I'm like at the final boss. I could totally beat him. But the story's so good. I, I don't want to, I don't want to stop. I don't want, I don't want to beat it. So then I ended up getting Dark Cloud 2 and I played that towards the very end too. And then I never beat it because I, I don't want the story to end. And I don't know. I, I know that I have like maybe five other games like that. Um, and I just feel guilty every time because I know that I have all these other games that I could totally beat, but then I end up buying another game. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. That's what that's what happened with Breath of the Wild. I, I was I was like that like fixated on Breath of the Wild and then I got to that fight and I think life got all crazy around that same time and and I just set it down. I was like, I need to figure out how to beat this line Lionel. <laughs> with these shock arrows and then i just never went back to it and uh, everything else fun and new came around and uh it although it always bugged me that like even when i went in i was not gonna buy skyward sword and i walked in and the whole time i felt like breath of the wild was just like on my shoulder be like what the hell are you doing dude what are you doing, dude? Yeah, <laughs> like, that's yeah. my problem. I always have something on my shoulder. Like, why are you, are you playing yeah. this? You haven't finished me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then they come up with all these like games, like Dead by Daylight, for example, oh. where there's like no start to end. Like, you know, there's no start to finish. It's just like this game that you would play multiple rounds over and over. Like, yeah, like Rocket League. Rocket and... League is my yeah. advice to like, if I, <laughs> th- I will just, just go to going. that. It's it's Those just yeah. it's a it's a safe space. I'm like, mm-hmm. like I always know what I'm gonna like. It's just something that I go to. I'm like I know I'm gonna enjoy this. I know it's it's uh, predictable. I'm gonna always have the <laughs> same experience, and I like that experience. And it's and it's it's very psychological. Like and it, I I've been diving into this like the the this whole like free to play with like microtransactions and like it's it's weird because I don't really spend any money in. I, other than everyone, every like three months, I'll spend like 10 bucks, which over the time, obviously that adds up, but I just, uh, I don't know. I, it's just always, it's a safe, comforting place for me to be in. If I have nothing else, like I, I don't, I don't have to fight any Lionels. I don't have to <laughs> like find shock era. No, like it's, it's just, it's a aspect that you hate right yeah i get anxiety about it. and that's yeah, why that's too. why i don't do a whole lot of single player games to begin with it's like there's uh for some reason there's this pressure i feel like on me personally and so i don't know and i but i totally get dead by daylight is the exact same way like i know what if i'm gonna jump into a dead by daylight match with you guys i know exactly what i'm gonna get into maybe i might die a bunch but it's not there's not this like it repe- it starts over and yeah it just starts it's over like, it's there's like, there's no pressure really like yeah, i don't know it's like mindless kind of like if you had like a very stressful work day you just kind of want to like sit down relax and play a game that you wouldn't have to like kind of really put yourself in cuz like if you play an rpg you have to pay attention to the storyline and learn all these new moves and and I, I'm just not for it. I'm just like, oh, I'd rather play like a quick game, quick like five rounds of like Dead by Daylight. Exactly. I that. Yeah. No, I, I I'm in the same exact boat. And those types of games definitely add to the uh, to the backlog and like re- like hesitating on starting something new because it's a whole new experience that you're diving into. Um, but um it's it's definitely i find when you get if you're playing a puzzle game or a metroidvania game or an adventure game the second you get stuck that's when you stop and you're like eh, let's see what else i could play and then you forget about and then the longer you wait you get back into it and you're like i forgot the controls oh my god i got a lot of walk through Oh my yes. god, I, that, oh. that happened to me. I have to start over every single time because I that don't remember too. the moves. I so yeah. I <laughs> I uh I haven't pl- I've only booted up Ori just to like be like, oh it's pretty. And uh, but uh is that a met is that a Metrovania style? That's a Metroidvania, oh, yeah. I did not know that. I'm never gonna play that game ever. Oh no <laughs> Oh yes you are. <laughs> oh no so, <laughs> watch if someone nominates it for next month. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But 
Metroidvania, I find, are so fun just because you get that anticipation of, oh, there's this ability I'm going to get soon. I wonder what it is. And you keep going. But yeah, there, there is a lot of teasing and one. like, and, yeah. and I, I understand the appeal of it, but, uh, but yeah, you get, when you get lost, you're like, Oh yeah. You put it down. You forget about it. Then you like, I don't remember the controls. <laughs> yeah. And then exactly. you want to look up a walkthrough. <laughs> um, do you guys ever think that you're going to catch up on your backlog? Like fully? Yes. A thousand percent. I'm confident. I'm a confident woman. Yeah. I thought that. I thought it was gonna be a universal no. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have that much trust in myself. A big maybe. I'm confident. I'm also confident. I'm on maternity leave, and I'm gonna put it to good use. I'm gonna be like 65 years old and be like, I finally did it. I finally did it. Yeah. <laughs> Episode like 1,000 something on Ty's podcast. Yes. We'll still be going strong. <laughs> I don't oh. think I'll be able to ever finish mine unless I sell like a ton of them. <laughs> I think it's going to be impossible to finish all the RPGs that I own. <laughs> yeah, RPGs are tough. Yeah. yeah, 36 hours each one. That's why I put it like last. Like I would like... <laughs> play one or two hours uh, weekly on an RPG and that's how I'm mm -hmm. beating Dragon Ball Z right now. I, I do like maybe two hours of it every week. So my backlog already shows I have 744 games but a lot of that is like the epic games or the prime gaming um, but on the Switch I have 105 games. A lot of them are digital. Um, on Steam, I have 198, <laughs> but I'll make a debt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you start with you start with the priority. And, but the uh, problem is, as we move forward, more and more games get introduced, and it just yeah. adds to the, to the yeah exactly. And the, that's why I did go back and like sell a lot of my games from like previous consoles because I'm like I'm probably never gonna ever like. <laughs> hook the, my PS2 up and play them. Um, um, but a lot of the games I do like have the intention to play one day. Like, um, I figure when I'm retired and old, <laughs> I'll just <laughs> spend my time playing video games. Yeah. Okay, we'll be at the retirement. So yeah. we'll just tag team the games and we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm also like, a definitely an emotional shopper and that's like where part of my problem is um because like the other day i was just like feeling down and i'm like let me buy something to make myself feel better oh, i do i do the then, same exact thing yeah and that's why i ended up with chris tales and then pokemon unite came out and i've just been playing that yeah. instead but yeah the free to play are definitely like like undermine the you're like I don't know. I did I, spend money though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On Pokemon United also. Yeah. yeah, well that that's but, true. Yeah. That, I yeah. mean that that's ideal. Like there there's some there's someone like if you've ever, if you've ever seen the the movie uh, Moneyball, like there's some someone out there that has calculated that they get more money per person with that model when it's mm -hmm. done this certain way, you know, and it and it works out for them financially. That's why freaking Epic can has they can pay billions of dollars to just give games away because they make so much money on Fortnite. If it if mm -hmm. it's done the right way, they it's more, you know, financially beneficial. That's the bottom line. Um, mm -hmm. I just spent twenty dollars on an Ariana Grande. Yeah, oh exa God, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like I feel like they didn't for... used to cost that much. I was just li listening to a yeah, podcast and they're like, so "Why is there? Why is every skin like?" 15 to 20 dollars now i feel like they used to be like mm -hmm. two like what the, what's with the the 10 times increase and it's it, because people they, they sell just as many at 20 dollars as they do at two dollars apparently they got they got me i was like when i found out the price because i don't play fortnite very much i'm like oh my gosh it's so expensive but i, ha <laughs> I had to <laughs> you know i always thought Fortnite concerts were really lame, but then mm -hmm. I attended a attended that Ariana Grande with Liz. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because she messaged me and she's like, hey, you want to get Ariana Grande concert? And I'm like, right now? Like, I need to get ready. I'm like, today, 
She got she stressed out. In a fortnight. Yeah, she yeah. sent like 15 text messages in a row being what? like, right now or like this weekend, like it's the last minute. Like, I wish I could. I can't go. Like, oh, she was just like in distress. And then she was like, wait, do you meet the Fortnite one? <laughs> It was amazing, though. In my defense, oh Fortnite my concerts are amazing. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, like, throughout the whole pandemic, it was, like, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> your, yeah, your, my, your perspective has changed, for sure. My brother showed me, like, a YouTube video of the Travis Scott one, and that was, like, before I was playing Fortnite, so I didn't even get to attend that one. But it looked really cool. I was just, like, it's so cool to, like, have everyone, you know, be there for that shared experience. I've never... I've never experienced that, but now I'm kind of curious. Don't worry. Uh, we're we're going to go to Lady Gaga one. Don't worry. I got you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to see what this is about. Uh, just out of pure yeah. curiosity. <laughs> now you kind of, you kind of sold me on it. So uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. Um, all right. Any last, any last uh, closing thoughts. We're gonna we're gonna blast for news because we're we're over five minutes. Uh, but um, any closing thoughts on sealed games? Um, yeah, I don't know. I like I said, it seems like most of us. It's either games that we've already played, games that are like have this like inherent value that you can. It wouldn't be like a smart financial decision to break that seal to play the game like because you could spend less money <laughs> buying a digital copy or something that you just ha you're, you're going to eventually open but you just haven't gotten to i don't feel like there's anything really much outside of that realm that we've discussed which all seems logical i mean we're all logical people here uh i do i do sometimes wonder if i'm do i genuinely like the game if i haven't gone back to it Am I trying to pretend that I like it just so I could go back to it? Or do I really yeah. actually not like it? No, that's a yeah. valid, valid thing. And and I think that's, are you talking about like again or like in the middle of it? When you're in the middle of it. And you're oh, playing, yeah, yeah. Like you have this, the you, obligation to. If you, if you stopped at Breath of the Wild, you know. And you backed out of it. If you really liked it, you probably would be like, "I gotta get back into it." But if you're like, "Eh, um, do you really like it?" There's like, like Astral's Chain. I bought Astral's Chain and I played maybe an hour of it. I don't, I don't think I'm ever going back into that one. <laughs> well, yeah. like how Ty earlier said that he was nervous about getting back into Breath of the Wild, and then when you did get back in, since it had been so long since you last played, like you ended up doing the wrong thing. Yeah. I think there's like that anxiety to getting back into a game that you haven't played in a long time because then it's like stressful like you have to try to remember where you're at like what where like where and what everything is um yeah no. kind of remember how to play and it's yeah sometimes it's like frustrating that's yeah. that's why i was like like expressing like genuine gratitude that you were like no like when <laughs> it, when you when you like no play breath of the wild i want like you were like you like i knew i liked it but you you were like open it back up and you're like no you're doing this wrong immediately i was like oh okay <laughs> and then it's just like okay now i can progress through the game now like it was just i was stuck on something that i didn't have there was this wall in front of me that it was preventing me from getting like and i had to put at, like x amount of extra effort into it to get mm -hmm. figure out what i was doing wrong and i just yeah. wasn't i wasn't ready to do that i was never in that mindset where i'm like okay i'm gonna put some effort into figuring out beyond the game, my personal experience with this game. And I don't know. It, it, and so you like, like, Oh, just do this one thing different and I can move forward. Made it made all the difference. And so I think also having people around you that, uh, either like, uh, that's why I really, I'm really excited about the whole like video game book club that we're doing because it's like, it's a kind of fun, like shared experience, even though we're all playing separately and they're all, so far it's only been single player games it's just something kind of a really unique experience to all like we have i don't know like probably 
I don't know, a dozen of us all playing Donkey Kong, Con all playing yeah. the single player it, game it's, it's together. It's really cool to see see everyone like, oh, did you get to this part? Yeah, oh, yeah. Man, yeah. Uh, did you try this? Did you try that? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're watching or listening, uh, join our Discord. Uh, there's uh, links in in my Instagram. Uh, usually it pops into the into the stream elements, but uh, or in the description if you're listening on audio, because uh, we're all in the Discord. Um, but yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, what a perfect timing for the bot. Just <laughs> just threw it out into the chat. If you're if you're on on Twitch, I couldn't have timed that better. Um, all right. I was gonna add quickly too, like yeah. with backlog games. Sometimes you do get some games that you just don't like, and I I personally don't try and force myself to play those games if I don't like them, even though it kind of makes me feel bad that the developers put time into it, but. I don't like something. I just don't want to force myself to play it. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are pretty slow too. Like I've had, I've started on some games where it's like there's absolutely no music in it, and I'm I'm just kind of like staring at the screen, kind of side scrolling, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna fall asleep. I'm gonna fall asleep. So <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. We cannot like yeah. every game. Yeah. It's yeah. Game. Exactly. It's one of those two. It's the two dollar ones that get you. The two dollar ones on Nintendo Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Paper Mario. I have um, the Origami King one that's on the Switch. I don't like the battle system. So like when I play it, like I like the writing and stuff, and I try to push like through it, but I I just don't like the battles. So I haven't touched that one in a while because I'm like. Just uh, I don't know. Whenever I think about the battle system, I'm like I don't want to play it. But I I do want to like eventually because I I know that you know a lot of people say it's a good game and I just like I'm trying to get past things. But it was the same for me with Luigi's Mansion Three. It was mm -hmm. the first Luigi's Mansion I've ever played, and it was fun. But it wasn't my for some reason I didn't connect with it too much. But I forced myself just to beat it just because I'm like, oh, I bought it. I, I, <laughs> I was having well. fun going through it, but it wasn't something that kind of stuck out with me as being something mm -hmm. that I wanted to replay or anything memorable. That's a game that I started with my with my son and we got through, I think, eight or nine floors. And then we just both stopped playing it at the same time. Like, like we were playing it together and then neither, because either one of us would be like, oh, let's play Luigi Mansion. And then one day we were just like neither of us ever mentioned it again that was like over a year ago i just or like no it wasn't did it when did it come out was it two years ago or was it a year ago two, two years year, two years ago yeah years yeah ago. so it was probably about a year ago that we just stopped and yeah same same thing uh it was like i, li I really like the game yeah what happened with monster hunter rise I know, I know. <laughs> okay, okay. We have a subject coming up. It's on the on. We have we have uh, topics going through the end of the year right now. There's something coming up uh, that it's uh, games you feel guilty about not completing or not starting. And we're gonna. It's kind of similar to this, so I think I have it spaced out probably another two months or so. But uh, that Monster Hunter Rise is like my big guilt right now. I think about that. More yes, than I should. Because I Aaron guilted <laughs> me into getting it. I know. We played together and, and Luke. for like a good two weeks. And then afterwards, it was like, eh. Me, it was, it was me, Aaron, and Russ. We were like, yeah, Monster Hunter Rise. We're gonna, this the, yeah. we're gonna go hard on this, and then and then we got like three or four of us in the Discord to buy it, and then we played we played it solidly for like two weeks, and then mm -hmm. everyone just disappeared. Including, oh. including me. <laughs> so I do feel very, very guilty. And this is this is when oh. I joined your Discord. So I'm like, oh man, these guys are amazing. They're playing video games. <laughs> like, they're, <laughs> they're parents. How do they do it? And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you caught us. You caught us in a moment. <laughs> not, gonna, not gonna lie, Max. I think you got you 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 played with us too, but you were did, yeah, you, you fell off of it too. I, Monster Hunter is one of those games that we were talking about how, like, you know, it's the safe zone of playing games like Pokemon Unite, Fortnite. I feel like I should be doing more, like, playing other games when I play Monster Hunter Rise. So I stopped playing Monster Hunter Rise. I finished the story mode, and I felt like I beat it, even though there's, like, so much more to do, like, with online friends and all that. 
So I stopped, but I'm open to play Link Edit. I know. I kind of want. I kind of want to play some Monster Hunter Rise now. I forgot about that game. Yeah. Not gonna lie, but I know I I feel guilty about that whole experience. We we rallied hard for Monster Hunter Rise, and uh, it lasted about two weeks, and I feel bad about that. Not gonna lie. Um, okay, real quick. I'm gonna. We're going into the news. Okay, that's not the right screen. No, neither is that. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Remastered Trilogy. It's real, and it's coming to Switch. Uh, it's not official yet. Not official. not official. It appears to... Sorry. Appears to be <laughs> appears to be real. Uh, not official. Not confirmed. There's sources. There's been rumors about this game for a long time. Uh, it's uh, they're Basically, it seems like they rebuilt uh, GTA 3... Vice City and San Andreas all in Unreal that can is uh, compatible with Switch and it's coming on multiple platforms including mobile I saw but it seems like PC and mobile versions are likely to be delayed but it looks like console editions are coming out this year if sources are to be uh, believed and I'm kind of excited about this because I played bits and pieces of all these games and I liked them all. I just, life got in the way. And so, I don't know. It definitely would be a game that I play for two weeks and then completely abandon. <laughs> Not going to lie. I'm excited for this, but I, I'm excited for different reasons. I don't care for GTA. That article says that if this game sells well, Rockstar is considering doing Red Dead Redemption. I want to play that. Uh, I played a lot of it on my Xbox 360, but I never got a chance to beat it because the controller stopped working. I was really upset about that. Uh, so I really want to play this game again, and I'm hoping this means we could see a lot of their other games that are uh, like Bully, for example. I love Bully. Oh, yeah. I think that's one of the coolest games ever. I hope that comes to the Switch. If, you know, all of this sells well, which I'm assuming this should sell well. I mean, it's GTA, you know, it's like, isn't it like the best selling game of all time? Almost the best selling game of all time with GTA 5. Yeah, I don't know. I, I always mix up all those uh, stats, but something it's up it's, there. It's up there. It's good to see them releasing something that's not GTA 5, too. There's always that. Yeah, well, it, it, so it, in this article, it talks about how. It was originally supposed to be like a pack in. They were just going to add on to the next gen version. Like you got it for free, but then it seems like they decided to split that off entirely too. And uh, so, um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Package together given to players who purchase the Yes, maybe I'm almost place. done. <laughs> she can wait a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, I'm Liz. sorry, sorry. I thought sorry. I was muted. <laughs> no, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Liz. Um, trust, trust me, I understand. Um, yeah, we understand. <laughs> um, the, so yeah, Red Dead would be a future title and then other stuff like that. But um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I think I think it would be cool. I think I'm excited for that to to be a potential um, for the Switch. I feel like the Switch needs those titles, especially moving forward. And I don't know. They they need they need that third part. They need the they need the 2K Rockstar support. They need the EA support, which it seems like now they're finally getting five years into the system when it's like the best selling system like of the last several generations and so um i, I guess they don't need it The these other it just seems like every, the developers and the publishers are finally getting on pay on on the same page as nintendo so um anyone else stoked on it not don't care anyone, anyone care be interested if it's uh gonna be physical on switch because i i have a feeling with some of the sources i have 
that the only reason why Rockstar doesn't support the Switch is because of it being a cartridge based system. Yeah. It could be if uh, they I mean, okay. Real quick. There uh the I talked about this briefly last week. Bioshock the collections, three three Bioshock games, one cartridge. The cartridge says Bioshock collection, you put it in and it'll download the other, like it just downloads the rest. Right? Russ, did it do that? Or it will do that eventually or something? I'm not entirely sure because when I put the cartridge in, all three games appeared on my yeah. menu. Oh, maybe are, but, are they all on the cartridge then, maybe? They might be. When I started Bioshock 1, it asked for an update. It didn't download. It was just an update. Weird. It took, like, two minutes to download. Yeah. So. Huh. But then, like, uh, stupid uh, Borderlands, it's only the first game on the di- on the cartridge, and then uh, the other two games are a code, which is stupid because... I bought all three games and I got one uh, used. Max, yeah, since we're talking about cartridges and Rockstar, uh, L.A. Noir was one of the first Nintendo Switch oh, games yeah. that had this whole issue. Uh, I think it was the very first game that because uh, it came out within the year of the Switch that came out, and a lot of people complained about that, and people looked into it as you know cartridge be expensive that's why a lot of people don't have physical copies of a lot of the game developers that's why they go with limited runs stuff like that uh i'm interested to seeing how it's if if it's going to be physical at all because i know before rockstar's done re-releases of their older games as digital only releases so yeah yeah. it could be um elinoir that that physical copy is it just the download or is it is there a cartridge? Uh, it has a cartridge, okay. but it's like only like 1% of the game. Like yeah. There's like none of it's in there, it was... and you have to download all of it. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, um, okay, moving on. Uh, Life is Strange, True Colors. It's been delayed now today. Uh, they announced it's delayed on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and then also yesterday they announced that the remaster collection was delayed uh, to 2022 for all platforms. Um, and so the True Colors um, new game is coming out on every every system except for Nintendo Switch on September 10th, and then the like add-on uh bonus uh, the wavelengths uh what is it content is coming out September 30th, but the Nintendo Switch version of True Colors is delayed until later in the year. They they said 2021 still, but no date and then um the remaster collection is delayed until 2022 without a date so the what was i gonna say um if you buy the like deluxe edition you still get the remaster collection but you just don't get it until next year but it's still like included and so um this is a bummer but because i was it seems like Switch would be a good platform to play this game on um, because it's not like the most, and even with it being remastered and everything, I don't feel like it's not the most visually like, I need this in 4K, you know, yeah. 60 frames per second. It's it's, story, it's a story-based game that would just be, that's this is a tight, I feel like the Switch is a perfect platform for, for um, Life is Strange. And so uh, it's a little, it's a bit of a bummer that everything on the Switch now is delayed without release dates and it was a very soft uh we're like i think it was a hoping for or for, it's still going to be 2021 but that i don't know in the in this day and age i feel like that is not a very strong commitment to it sticking i would be i would not be surprised if uh true colors for the switch doesn't get also pushed to 2022 because they didn't announce they didn't say that yesterday they said it in a little interview today but because there was no release date for the switch technically before that um anyone big switch version of that has been like they haven't shown much of true colors on the switch all we got was like that five second clip at e3 of the gameplay and then they never showed anything so i don't think true colors is going to come out this year I, I have a feeling the development of that isn't going well because that's that's like a big game for the Switch. I have a feeling that's going to be like a cloud version game eventually. 
they're gonna cancel what they're making and just make it you think? fully cloud. No, I not feel this, like not it, this late. I, f- I feel like it because like that's a that's a really big game, like the True Colors one. If you look at the games graphically, I'm surprised they're trying to get that on the Switch without yeah. trying to use the cloud. Because Square Enix games, are, for the Switch at least, some of the newer ones are cloud only on the Switch, like Guardians of the Galaxy, for example. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe, but I feel like we would have heard about that by at this point i mean mate you know what mm, i don't know i'm torn yeah, just, I, I, guess I'm not, I guess so i guess i'm not i'm not yeah. max i'm i've learned to not take any of your weird uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> predictions for granted anymore and so at this point who knows sure sure it's gonna be it's gonna be a cloud <laughs> cloud game um, didn't mean to darken myself um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm bummed because I was kind of looking forward to playing that this next month. Uh, I liked, I liked the original Life is Strange. I never finished it. So I was looking forward to getting into the remastered, uh, to, to actually like fully play through it. So we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> um, next up. Uh, Idris Elba is Knuckles in the next Sonic film. I'm kind of, I'm kind awesome. of, I'm kind of pumped on that. I was just, uh, uh, Max and I were just talking about we watched the new Suicide Squad. He's awesome in that. That's a good movie. Uh, I think we both gave it. You gave it seven out of seven or eight out of ten. I gave it an eight out of ten. Yeah. Uh, I really liked. I do wish it was Dwayne Johnson, kind of, that was voicing <laughs> Knuckles, since they kind of made a joke of that in the first Sonic movie. I think was Did it. They? Did they? Uh, where, it might have been in the press for there was like be voiced by Dwayne Johnson. And I, I thought it sounds so awesome for that to be yeah. the case. But this is still a great actor also. So yeah. I'm curious if he's gonna like it now is now Knuckles British. If he's gonna like good question. <laughs> I don't know. I mean it's not out of the realm. I'm I'm a big Knuckles fan. Uh so um and it, that was the last that was the last movie I saw in theaters was Sonic the Hedgehog. And it was the first movie I took my son to. <laughs> and so he was like, This is awesome. Let's go to a bunch of movies. And then it was like that was like February twenty eighth of oh, twenty twenty. No. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, bad news, bud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, we haven't been to a movie uh-huh. since. So, Sonic kind of holds a little special place in my heart for uh, going to see films. Um, last up on the news before we wrap up is, um, oh, it's, uh, it's it doesn't matter. It's that Super Mario Brothers that sold for two million. There's a bunch of sketchy crap with this. Uh, it wasn't through an auction. It was through a weird brokerage like investment firm that you can they buy up um they buy up stuff including video games and then they sell they establish a value of it that's separate from what they paid for it and then sell shares in that product and then try to sell it and then people who invest in it make the difference of money that they bought into for their shares and so it's just it's it's very convoluted and it's like kind of it's kind of like the stock system yeah man. yeah and like it, it literally <laughs> is it's it's its own they're kind of establishing their own like uh, exchange of stuff but it's all very kind of secret where like they buy stuff and then now it's raising questions of like all these like did they cuz they could technically like buy it themselves just to garner the most expensive video game ever sold and then it and because you look at this this article uh unopened copy of Super Mario Brothers sells for a record 2 million dollars and then the fur this is I mean this is a verge but it's in the New York Times right here you see the name of the company that that established this whole thing they they bought it and they sold it and uh you know and it was an anonymous anonymous buyer i don't know i i get weird i get weird heebie-jeebies about all this uh stuff that 
everyone's like, oh, the exact same thing sold for a quarter of the price two months ago. And there's just weird stuff happening in the specifically the like, and this was like graded and everything. I know we talked about that earlier. Um, I don't know. I get I get weird vibes from it. Uh, they're getting a lot of attention right now from people like you can pay you can pay like twenty five bucks to buy a share of, you know, a sealed nine point eight graded Super Mario Brothers, and then maybe make you may make money, may lose money when they sell it for whatever. They'll make money either way, but it's just I don't know. It's a, it's a weird, very weird concept. It, it, it is a very still new. <laughs> yeah. So I touched on that because we were talking about uh, like sealed games and stuff like it's potentially for value i just i feel like the landscape is a little murky out there with uh manipulation of values i think that's going to be a big thing in the future i meant to bring up earlier but um any any closing thoughts before we wrap up i know we're we're we are over it's 10 30. sorry guys for keeping you late it was a fun discussion though Definitely gonna open up Sushi Striker after tonight. Can, can you get it? Can you get it digitally? You can, but it's fifty dollars. Ooh, fifty dollars. Ooh, yeah, it's the one wow. Nintendo game that I was able to get for five dollars at Walmart for sealed because it didn't sell well. Oh wow. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's rough. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't. I, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna guide you either way on that one. Um. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're wrapping. If you're watching live, thank you for chat. You guys were freaking awesome. Toast to see you hanging out. Um, Neander, Beach, you guys are all skeezes. Uh I see, I see all you guys too. Um, <laughs> Chicago Retro Gamer. I just saw Spider-Man for a cause. Thank you for the uh, follow. I appreciate it. Thank you for the last one I saw. Um, I, let me just double check. I don't think I saw any comments come in, but let's just double check. No, nothing. Hey, guys, if you're watching live, throw a comment in. I'll read. I'll, I will read it. I promise. Don't be scared. Next week, I want you to be in in that little form. Um, throw something out, and we will. It, it can be to one of us or all of us. But uh, thank you guys all for being here. It was awesome discussing this with you guys. Uh, we'll be back next week on Twitch again exclusively because I signed my life away to Twitch to be exclusive. Um, <laughs> but no, I, 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 I didn't. I, <laughs> I just, I, Sally, I want your channel points. <laughs> Give me, give me really? your channel. <laughs> I almost, I, I almost accepted it. I almost accepted it. I, I know you're on I the verge. <laughs> um, no, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, you lost, I lost my train of thought, but, um, yeah, we're only on Twitch now. This is the first episode. Thank you for, for hanging strong in the chat. Thank you for everyone watching. If you're listening after or watching after on the YouTube, you are, also a rock star uh, leave a leave a review and um we'll see you next week next week i already forgot what the topic oh next week we are discussing the, the hot topic of the original console war the snes versus the genesis uh we're talking about you know what we had what we played what our thoughts are uh nowadays looking back on it and so um We'll be back next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. GMT. Thank you, guys. Be sure to follow everyone um, on the panel, and we'll be, be back next week. Um, thank you, guys, again. It was good. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Everyone have a good night. We love you. Love you, chat. I'll uh, see you guys later. Adios.